Oh, hello there, students. I'm just sitting outside reading in the moonlight. As you can see, almost a full moon. I think tomorrow will be the full moon. So that means we are almost exactly halfway through Ramadan. And in honor of this holy month of fasting for our Muslim friends, I thought I would read from The Thousand and One Nights. Uh, this is the Harvard Classics edition. And it's a read with one of the stories I want to read tonight. One of my favorites is um, the story of Nuruddin and Ennis El Jealous. And it's one of the longer stories. So we're going to do this one probably just a few minutes at a time. Let's see if you've got the patience for that. Um, anyway, the story of Nuruddin. Ennis El Jealous. There was in El Basra a certain king who loved the poor and indigent and regarded his subjects with benevolence. He bestowed of his wealth upon him who believed in Muhammad, God bless and save him, and was such as one of the poets who have written of him hath described. He used his lances as pens and the hearts of his enemies as paper their blood being his ink. And hence, I imagine, our forefathers applied to the lance the term katia. What I like about the story is there, there's a constant inclusion of, of poetry mixed in with the prose. I wish I knew the original Arabic that these, these verses were written in. Um, but still beautiful. Essentially, the pen is mightier than the sword. And this is a story that goes back uh, probably, you know, around a thousand years. The name of this king was Muhammad, the son of Solomon, Ez Zaini. And he had two wizards, or viziers in other translations. One of whom was named El Moin, the son of Sawi, and the other, El Faro, the son of Kakan. I apologize to my Muslim friends if I am completely butchering these names. And of course, with a lot of these names, you'll see different pronunciations and different spellings of them. This story itself is the story of Nuruddin, and Nuruddin is spelled N U R E D D I N. If you met anybody of that name today, you would just call him Nordin, one of the great milers. This Nordin Morsali from uh, Algeria. Anyway, back to our story. I digress. El Fadl, the son of Kakan, was the most generous of the people of his age, upright in conduct, so that all hearts agreed in loving him, and the wise complied with his counsel. And all the people supplicated for him length of life, for he was a person of auspicious aspect, a preventer of evil and mischief. But the wazir El Moin, the son of Sawi, hated others and loved not good. He was a man of inauspicious aspect. And in the same degree that the people loved Fadl El Din, the son of Kakan, so did they abhor hated El Moin, the son of Sawi, in accordance with the decree of the Almighty. Now the King Muhammad, the son of Solomon, El Zaini, was sitting one day upon his throne, surrounded by the officers of his court, and he called to his wizir El Fadil, the son of Kakan, and said to him, I desire a female slave unsurpassed in beauty by any in her age, of perfect loveliness and exquisite symmetry, and endowed with all the praiseworthy qualities. Such as this, replied his courtiers, is not to be found for less than 10,000 pieces of gold. And the sultan thereupon called out to the treasurer, saying, Carry 10,000 pieces of gold to the house of El Fadil, 
the son of Kakan. So the treasurer did as he commanded, and the wazir departed after the sultan had ordered him to repair every day to the market and to commission the brokers to procure what he had described and commanded also that no female slave of greater price than 1,000 pieces of gold should be sold without having been shown to the wazir. The brokers, therefore, sold no female slave without showing her to him. And he complied with the king's command, and thus he continued to do for a considerable time, no slave pleasing him. But on a certain day, one of the brokers came to the mansion of the wazir al Fadil and found that he had mounted to repair to the palace of the king. And he laid hold upon a stirrup and repeated these two verses. O thou who hast reanimated what has rotten in the state, thou art the wazir ever aided in heaven. Thou hast revived the noble qualities that were extinct among men. May thy conduct never cease to be approved by God. He then said, O oh, my master, the female slave for the procuring of whom the noble mandate was issued hath arrived. The wazir replied, Bring her hither to me. So the man returned, and after a short absence came again, accompanied by the damsel of elegant stature, high-bosomed, with black eyelashes, and smooth cheek, and slender waist, and large hips, clad in the handsomest apparel. The moisture of her lips was sweeter than syrup. Her figure put to shame the branches of the oriental willow. In short, she was a brick house, mighty, mighty, letting it all hang out. And her speech was more soft than the zephyr passing over the flowers of the garden, as one of her describers hath thus expressed. And once again, we have verse but it's, it's not the Commodores this time. Her skin is like silk, and her speech is soft, neither abundant nor deficient. Her eyes, God said to them, be, and they were, affecting men's hearts with the potency of wine. May my love for her grow more warm each night and cease not until the day of judgment. The locks on her brow are dark as night, while her forehead shines like the gleam of mourning. When the wazir beheld her, she pleased him extremely, and he looked towards the broker and said to him, What is the price of this damsel? The broker answered, The price bidden for her hath amounted to ten thousand pieces of gold, and her owner hath sworn that this sum doth not equal the cost of the chickens which she hath eaten, nor the cost of the dresses which she hath bestowed upon her teachers nor she hath learnt right, for she hath learnt writing and grammar, and lexicology, and the interpretation of the Koran, and the fundamentals of law and religion, and medicine, more extensive than Dr. Fauci, and the computation of the calendar, and the art of playing upon musical instruments. The wazir then said, Bring me to her master. And the broker immediately brought him, and lo, he was a foreigner who had lived so long the time had reduced him to bones and skin, as the poet hath said. How hath time made me to tremble? For time is powerful and severe. I used to walk without being weary, but now I am weary and do not walk. Old man, look at me now. I was once like you were. Tomorrow, we'll pick up a little more of the story of Nuruddin and Enes El Jalis.